Hello, wonderful people of YouTube. Welcome to the detailed tutorial for my smart floor selection flying machine elevator with call button Mark II. If that name didn't sound specific enough, let me tell you that this is a pretty in-depth tutorial. My goal in this video is to not only show you how to build a cool elevator, but I'd also like to show how most of the circuits work on their own so that you can use and connect them into your own designs in the future. So grab a cup of joe, put on your thinking caps and listening ears, get ready to make the coolest little elevator you ever did see. All right, hey, welcome to the tutorial. I don't want to waste too much time, so let's get right into it from here. We're going to start. This is the bottom of the elevator. So this will be below your first floor. And we're going to put two droppers there. We're going to come down. And we're going to have two repeaters going into the droppers. Some blocks up here. Let's get some redstone there. And a button. This is just going to let us activate the bottom droppers if we want. I'm only going to build one of these for right now. But um, the final product will have two. It's just easier to do one at a time. And this is the flying machine. So you need an observer looking at that dropper, powering the sticky piston. Then we're going to come up, up to and out four. And then we're going to put our observer and our piston facing this direction. So this is a flying machine right now. And we want a dropper above this observer just in case we don't want a runaway flying machine that would be no good so we're just going to put a stopper up there to make sure that this bad boy doesn't go off into forever and it doesn't which is very nice so we'll put our two droppers there to stop it and then we're going to come out the back end of these with two blocks and two repeaters powering those blocks We'll come back up here with some redstone dust, and we need another button. So now our flying machine can go up and down, no problem between these two. This is just temporary. We'll put in a proper one when we know the height. All right, so that works pretty good. I'm happy with that. From here, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to put our floor onto the flying machine, just on top of the slime blocks. And these can be any solid block you want, but I like this little design. Maybe even sea lanterns to give it some light. There we go. Now that we have our floor, we know our floor is going to be this height. And from there, we can grab some glazed terracotta. You can use any color you like, but it needs to be glazed terracotta. And I, I kind of like this one. Looks like futuristic Star Wars elevator or something, you know? Then uh, we're just going to outline where the elevator shaft will be. And so we know there's going to be a second flying machine here. So we're just going to adjust for that space. And this is what we'll end up with. And now we're going to actually need to build the first circuit. Okay, to build the first circuit, we're going to select or leave these two blocks open here. We're going to leave those two open. And this is our interface now. So we don't need glazed terracotta anymore. We can use solid blocks here. This one is going to be the button. So the button is just going to come out and there will be a torch here. But for now, I just want to get everything set in right. So we're going to have a comparator here. An item frame on this side. Oh no, that didn't work. <laughs> Bear with me here. Item frame, torch. And then we need a button on this side. So we take this out, come out six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and we put 
our blocks like this with redstone on them. Now we can do a quick test with here. If we put it on the max, which is this direction, we should have one power here. You can test that without the texture pack by just quickly putting another redstone there. So this is good. We want all this to power these torches. We'll put a block on top of them with another torch on top. And to make sure that only one activates at a time, we're going to put some blocks here, some repeaters on top of those, and then we need a slab. So we plop the slab right in here, put redstone on top like that, and now when we play with this thing, we should get... Right, we'll put another torch there. So that torch represents the first floor, the second floor, the third floor, and the fourth floor. Only one of these torches should be going on at a time, and if that's the case, you've built this circuit right, so you can finish off by putting that torch there. Now it will only select when you press the button. Oop. <laughs> This is looking good so far. We're just going to create the output now. We need a sticky piston and a redstone block onto all of these observers, just like that. Then we'll put blocks on top of these pistons and more observers like this. So they are looking this way and they are powering this block. Then we'll come down here and we'll grab the redstone off of that. And I think I had built it like this. So we have an observer looking at that redstone, an observer looking at that observer, powering this sticky piston to move the redstone. So whatever floor we select, one, boom. Yep, and it comes back to, yeah, okay. So now we know how to build this first selection circuit. Okay, now that we've got this circuit all built and working, on my design, I have eight blocks in between the buttons, which um, you could do more or less if you wanted. It will be harder to fit everything in if you do less, and it won't stick with the tutorial, but... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we're actually going to go one, two, three, and leave a space there. Yeah, we're leaving the space here because this is where the lock is. So we need to do that on both sides. Just leave a space there and come up here. So now this is where our second floor is going to be so we can just fill this all in and then we need to build another one of these circuits here exact same as we did down there so i'll be back when that is done okay here we are we've got one of those floor selection circuits on every floor and now i believe the next step we should take is moving these dispensers up to the top floor so these dispensers are actually flush with the floor block of the flying machine. So when we come up here, we know the floor wants to be on this block. So we'll just make sure that's lined up. And good thing I double checked because mine wasn't. And we're just going to build the same thing we had over here or down there, which is just the repeaters those and a button in case we want to launch it manually which we might have to do and we can get rid of this now just has to make sure this goes straight up all right so that is working and it goes right back down. I know that's going to work. Um, 
Now what we need, actually coming back to this flying machine, I forgot to mention. To make this stop on different floors, we need to get this pish piston, what, this piston, to the max push level. So, how we do that is we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 blocks. When we put this one here, it's a counterweight, which makes that 12. So if a double extender were to put a block there, the elevator will stop. If there was a regular iron block here and that counterweight wasn't on, this thing would push right through. And we don't want that. So that's why we need a block on here to be a counterweight and I use a redstone block so that we can get an output out of that. So this is what the flying machine will actually look like. And then you should have all floor, all four of these floor selection circuits done on one on every floor. Also double check that these are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight blocks apart. And you only need this space below floor two and below floor three. Floor four does not need one and neither does floor one. Once you have this, you're ready to move on to the next step. All right, so we know this is where the button is and this is the edge of the elevator shaft so we know the floor is going to be oop, right here one block below the buttons so we can just boom we know there's where the floor is going to be we'll put in our floor blocks and now with our floors being here we can put our sticky pistons one block below that with whatever gate block you want to use. I use waxed copper stairs for mine. But um, you can use really, really any block that the sticky piston can pull here. And then we'll put a little iron doorway around that. Now it's the block below the sticky pistons here that gets the redstone reading from the block. So if I were to put a dropper here, this thing requires a lot of tests, by the way. If you don't want to test it, you might end up with a lot of problems later on down the line. But if we put a dispenser here, which is where the floor will be. And we launch this bad boy. We can see that this is perfectly lined up with the redstone blocks. And that's good. That's what we want to see. So from here, we'll go a slab there, a slab there, a full block here, full block here, and then we'll go up. We'll put repeater in there and connect this redstone up. From here, we go one, two into a full block here. We'll put two dust there with a torch on the side. Now we need some hoppers. We'll come down like this. We'll put two hoppers facing into each other like that. And out the back here, we're going to have a comparator looking into this hopper with a repeater there into a block repeater there, repeater there, and dust there. We'll also put a torch on the side of that block with a redstone dust as output. This is going to lock the call button circuit. Then we'll put some more over here. We'll put a block there. Oops, a block here with a torch on it, connected up to redstone to that torch. And then we also need a comparator looking into here, powering there with a torch there and two redstone like that. To finish this off, we're going to put 
three blocks into this hopper. They should all move over to here. Oh, there's four. There we go. So we have three in here. When the elevator is here, that door should be open. And if it is not, the door will close. This is the next step. You'll also just have to make your floor flush with this block. So I used glass because it's nice to see through, but you can use any block you want for your floor. Now you want to make your floors for every single stop on the elevator. I'll be back when that's done. All right, with all of the floors in, I believe we're ready for the next step, which would be the top double extenders level with the floor of two and three. So I'll show you how to build one of those right now. Okay, for these double extenders, we're gonna bring up the back wall until it is level with where this floor should be. We're gonna take one block out so that it's the block here that is going to be level with this floor. The top of that block will be level with this floor. So this is where we put our hole for the double extender. And now we will put our blocks in. We'll grab some sticky and some observer is what we're gonna need. We're gonna come out here and put two pistons. Why is the sun there? Okay, there we go. Looks a lot nicer now. So we're gonna put in our four sticky pistons all looking this way. And on this first one here, we're gonna do repeaters on four ticks with actually it's an observer looking that way to power these. Don't worry about that yet. We'll have another observer here with a block on top coming over and in line with these. We'll just have this hook around like that. We can now reset that block and put some redstone here. Okay, I shouldn't have reset that block. There we go. Now, this is our double extender. From here, we can put block here. And we're just going to do a little mono stable here with one tick here. And we'll put a block there with a button. Now we should be able to activate this double extender whenever we want. So now we'll go do the same thing on the third floor. But the mono stable is going to come out of a different end. Now this is. <clears throat> this is just for the third floor. We're going to put a repeater here on four ticks with our monostable over here instead of over there. And we're going to go one, two, three, four blocks. <clears throat> we're going to put repeater, repeater, repeater here with a dust there. We are also going to put a sticky piston here in line with there with a redstone block here and we'll put a block there with a button on top and now we can try this one out whenever and we just push the button whenever we want to fire it this is really important for testing to have these buttons here if i want to say test to go to the second floor i will throw that out push the button Sorry, wrong button. <laughs> Push this button and it'll come up to the second floor. And now from here, we'll realize that all we need to do is pull these blocks away to make the elevator go down. With the main double extenders out, we're ready to work on the next main circuit, which will be the locks that go here, the double extender locks. So let's get into that. All right, here we are at the third floor gap here that we made earlier. And 
what we want to put here is the double extender locks. So on each side here, we're going to want a solid block with two sticky pistons facing into it here, just like this on both sides. Down here, we're going to build a two by three platform with the repeater timings two, four, and the dust. From here, we're going to go down a block like this, connect those. Here's the edge of our doorway. Go over one more, up and up like that. Now that we have this, we're going to put in a one by three here with the same timings as over there. Four in the middle one, two on the last one, and a dust right here at the block. On top of this, we're going to put a block temporarily get rid of that redstone so we could put a slab here with a repeater going into that block put another block here one two three four and on the fourth block we'll put another one up here diagonally we'll go dust repeater dust dust to connect to here and right here we just need a quick little pulse extender this comparator is important that the one little thing here is pointing into that block and then this one has to face the other way put two dust there a repeater here and a block like that this is where we test the level three lock push that button again and it closes and then it opens again that's what we want to see let's do the same thing for the second level just don't put this block in yet actually wait yeah put that block in <laughs> Okay, I've got the floor two double piston extender put in, built the exact same way as the floor three one, except now at this block, which was our input up there, we're going to actually go out two more. We're going to go dust, repeater on four ticks, dust, and then we'll have an observer here eventually, but not right now. So this is our new input for the floor two one which works like a charm. And the third one should also be working. Very good. That's what we like to see. Let's get ready for the next step. We are going to go from the side of this and we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and over one. Now we can get rid of these. And we'll go down, there'll be a torch here, an empty space here, and a torch there. This is kind of the, the end point of the floor call button circuit. So there's going to be a bunch of these, and that's where this bad boy is going to fit in. So I'll show you how to build one of those now. If we repeat this pattern here, we are going to want four torches and a block on top. So that's a torch, a space, a torch, a space, a torch, a space. Yeah, this is where we want it to be. Once we have our four torches, we're going to want to put some blocks here onto each of these just to put repeaters there to turn the torches on or off. Next from that, we're going to come back to blocks and up one. So we have a torch that powers those repeaters. Oops. Now from here, we want down here and we'll bring these around to here. And this is what we want to see. We just want some blocks that can get powered by both that torch and this torch will power that block. So we want this redstone to be able to be powered by both of those. Next, we want repeaters again into each of these blocks with the torches on them. Nice and simple like that. Then we grab a redstone block and we put a redstone block on all of these. We'll put a block in the middle, and this is where we want our sticky pistons with a one block gap there. So we'll just put in all of our sticky pistons to grab those redstone blocks. Then we're going to go over one more block. Now we're just going to have observers powering these sticky pistons. 
So when they change, it should either pull or push the block. Okay, now that we have this, don't worry about where these redstone blocks are right now. We'll fix those. We need a block that is down and below these observers with torches on top of them. So the observers are looking at the torches and we'll just have a torch tower all the way up for eight torches and then the top repeat or the top observer here should be looking at the top torch so we'll go one two three four five six seven down one more and this is eight from that one we'll have a repeater on four ticks going in a monostable circuit here and now this is the input so this will be the first call button if we now fix the blocks where they should be with no locks on it should only change that top little block all these other ones shouldn't change if i can fly up fast enough to show you that there that's what it should look like and then we just need blocks here on the sides of all those torches going into the torches that are off right below the observers and these are going to be the locked circuits so we just take those repeaters and we can extend them into different directions now just like this and the top one does need one the top one needs one but the bottom one doesn't so this is what it should look like there should be three of these little circuits here powering all of these into these and these should only turn off when the top one goes so if that goes only this one goes if this one goes only that one goes and the rest are on make sure that's working before you build the next row of these and you're gonna need four of these two blocks apart so this is where the next torch tower is going and so on so this is your spacing for these circuits and now we need to build three more of them <laughs> let's uh, get to work on that so here are my four call button circuits all placed in beside each other and they're two blocks apart if you are getting confused by the tutorial or any of the spacings of any of the circuits remember you can always download the world in the description and fly around look at my my complete one and you can kind of just piece together it yourself it's a lot easier to see when you have a proper working one next to you just, just go ahead and study it if you need to but for now we're going to test these all work so if i put the first floor with no lock only that top one will go there it's easier to see if we grab redstone lamps and put them off of each one so if we go one two four that top one blinks if we lock it here The third one will blink. If we lock it here, the second one will blink. And then the first one. Once you have all four of these circuits working beside each other and they're all tested and good to go, then you can continue on to the next step. The next step that will be in the next video. Unfortunately, the video is already pretty long and we're running out of time with lots left to go. We're about halfway done with this elevator. If you've made it this far, give yourself a big pat on the back because this was some of the most complicated stuff. The rest is just going to be hooking everything up together with wires and then we're done and you've got a working elevator. As usual, there will be a world download link in the description in case you want to download and study the machine for yourself before you build it.
And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you keep an eye out for part two when that comes out. Should be coming out in the next couple of days here. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. I'm Bagwetti. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you in the next one. Uh, bye bye. <laughs>